All right, guys, looks like we're about 6.35 and it's about time to start. Um, guys, welcome. This is uh, typically an event where we invite the community into our home and uh, show everybody what we do. Uh, obviously, with current situations, we'd have to do things remote. Um, so we hope you enjoy the show. Uh, the show is a webinar. If you guys hadn't heard uh, earlier, this is an opportunity for you guys to see us. All the attendees are always muted uh, and we can't see you. So sit back and enjoy the show. Uh, we're gonna ask that nobody uses the chat this evening, but rather uh, if you guys have a question, use the Q&A button in the uh, bottom of the screen. We have six panelists tonight. And uh, if any one of us is not talking, we will be watching that Q&A to answer any questions you guys have. If we get overwhelmed, uh, we are going to have an FAQ page on our website, uh, probably be live in you know two days or so, and we're going to answer any questions that we didn't answer on that page. And this would not be a Zoom event if there wasn't at least a little bit of drama. It turns out that our live transcript translates Mount Lake Terrace into Mount Lake Terrorists. We assure you that we are not terrorists, and we will be correcting the transcript after this event. <clears throat> All right, guys, um, we do have more panelists than just me, thankfully. Uh, you guys are going to hear from, well, you know what? I'll have you guys introduce yourselves. Penny, why don't you go first? <laughs> <laughs> Got to unmute yourself. Thanks. I love mutes. Uh, I have a little sign for my classroom that says, remember to unmute. Uh, my name is Penny LeFevre. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad that you're able to join us tonight. Um, I Let's see, what can I tell you about myself? I am a, a, the lead in the biotechnology pathway, and I'm very excited to tell you all about it tonight. And uh, let's see, something interesting about myself. Hmm. Uh, I've sung on Carnegie Hall five times. Sung, sung on stage at Carnegie Hall five times now. So that's something interesting. The music and songs go together. Uh, let's see, Brian, you're up. Unmute yourself, please. Hello, everybody. I'm Brian Smelser. Um, I spent some time as a nuclear propulsion mechanic in the Navy, and I've been teaching about 13 years. About eight of that was uh, teaching eighth grade science, and now I've been teaching high school in this uh, STEM program through the aerospace pathway for about the last four years now. Um, looking forward to uh, talking to you about all the ins and outs of the aerospace program, um, and I'll turn it over to Kim. Hi, everyone. My name is Kim Won. Uh, I'm a computer science teacher. It's my third year at MTHS. Before that, I was a math teacher. I have a background in computer science, a degree in book computer science. Um, I have two kids, and um, my son is planning to apply for the program for next year, and hopefully he can join us. All right, back to you. James? James, you must unmute. Thank you. Um, my name is James Wilson. I have the fortune of teaching all of the uh, freshmen of the STEM program. Before they choose a pathway, they come through my program. Uh, I also have 13 years of teaching experience. And uh, I like the interesting thing about me aspect. So uh, this summer, I actually got to kayak Deception Pass and learn how to do the currents and all that. It was really fun. All right. So. I know there's a handful of eighth graders who are listening and I wanna to talk to you guys first. I want you guys to close your eyes and I want you guys to imagine a world where before you even learn how to drive, you get to operate $20,000 pieces of machinery. I want you guys to think about being in class, getting caught playing that video game. And I know you guys have done it, but here your instructor comes up behind you and tells you how to improve that game using code. Instead of just doing the same experiment every year in a science class forever, I want you guys to imagine doing original scientific research with the support of experts in that field. And if that doesn't impress you, imagine taking foodborne bacteria and turning it into a nightlight. Well, guess what, guys? That's what we do in our program. Now, parents, I know you guys are looking for something a little bit different. Um, I want you guys to think about an opportunity where your students are challenged to be independent uh, developers 
where they have to be creative and see failure as a step in the process and not the end of it. I want you guys to think about an opportunity where by the time your students graduate high school, they already have a college transcript full of relevant transferable credits, not just electives, but these are credits that could go towards a college major in a STEM field. And imagine a curriculum that's overseen by industry representatives. We're not just a bunch of teachers who think we know best. Each one of us is backed by industry representatives that validate what we do. So guys, that's what we're here to talk to you about tonight. That is our STEM program. Um, so why a STEM program? Uh, I'm gonna do my best. There's a lot to unpack on this uh, graph. So ultimately what we're looking at is a huge amount of STEM jobs, uh, which means a huge opportunity for students to be employed. Uh, Washington State is looking at about 34,000 of its graduates this year getting something beyond high school, some sort of credential. Could be a doctorate, could be a technical certification, but 34,000 of them. Well, it turns out that there's only about 15,000 jobs available that aren't STEM. So it means that half of those students right off the bat need to have their credential in a STEM field, or they're gonna end up going back to get a credential in a STEM field anyways, in order to be employed. Uh, and the story doesn't end there. There's 34,000 students, but there's 80,000 STEM jobs available in Washington State uh, in the year 2030, which is where we expect this year's graduates to be credentialed and in the workforce. Uh, what this means, long story short, is if you want an easy time getting a job, the market says go to STEM. And oh, by the way, all the STEM jobs we're talking about in this are family sustaining jobs. So this isn't just, this isn't looking at uh, intro jobs and stuff like that. So that's why we have a STEM program ultimately is the industry is asking for more people. So this is a great place to focus our students. And uh, here's how we do it. So this slide basically represents our entire presentation. Uh, the STEM program that you guys are here to learn about is a four year program at Mount Lake, Mount Lake Terrace High School where we're focusing on the math and science, and then the application of it, be that engineering, be that bio, be that computer science. Um, we have those three pathways, but we go way beyond that. Uh, this is actually my favorite part of the program is the community that we've developed here. We have, I think it's five after school clubs and uh, they're all running this year. And uh, God, we have like 60 kids after school every day. We don't ask them to, they just show up. Uh, we do community building events that are not tied to our curriculum at all. Uh, we have student designed and developed video game competitions. Uh, the last two that we ran, this was before COVID, uh, had over a hundred attendees. And these are just kids getting together, being STEM kids, hanging out, having a good time. Uh, we take this community beyond the school as well. You're going to hear later on about students who are going out into industry and getting internships in STEM fields that they're researching. And uh, we also have industry members coming into our program. In fact, today, uh, I took over my office hours with a civil engineer who came in and talked about how great it is to be a surveyor. As students go through this program, um, you guys are going to hear a lot, in fact, in this presentation about the different college credits they can achieve and uh, different national recognitions. So this isn't just a, a program in the Edmond School District that gives them a high school diploma. They're going to get credentials that are going to be recognized nationwide. Overall, what we're looking to do, pardon that. All right, well, behind that little screen there, it says that our goal <laughs> is to inspire students to look at a STEM field, to engage them in that STEM field. So they're not just thinking about it and talking about it, they're getting their hands dirty and doing it. Well, except the computer science kids, their hands stay clean. I don't know how they do it. And ultimately we're preparing them for the world of STEM. This means that they're ready for rigorous college programs and they're aware of the opportunities out there that they're gonna seek. So uh, I'm gonna get to take a break talking here. Uh, we've compiled a video of the different students who are leaders in our clubs talking about what the clubs mean to them.
Oakland Technology Student Association or Hi, I'm Katie Berry, and for the last three years, I've been serving in the Technology Student Association, or TSA's leadership, and I'm now current president of our club. TSA is a space that allows students a place to explore their interests in the technological field and learn valuable STEM and leadership skills that can help serve them in their futures and during competitions. Personally, TSA helped me explore different pathways in STEM through fashion design, animatronics, biotechnology, filmmaking, and many more. I started off knowing absolutely nobody at Monterey Terrace High School and doubting my abilities both in STEM and leadership, and now I run the largest STEM organization in the state. I have taken home multiple awards for my creations, and I'm now heading a computer science program researching climate change at Snohomish County. All things I couldn't have done without the guidance of TSA members and the club overall. The fun atmosphere in TSA is something I know I'll miss next year in college, and along with all the friends I've made from it. TSA is an amazing space both for competition skill, competition skill advancement and socializing. Hi, my name is Seth Myers. I am a sophomore at Mount Lake Terrace High School and I'm in the Rocketry Club. I'm the treasurer. So in Rocketry, you build rockets, you design rockets, and you launch rockets. I mean, it's kind of the best thing right there. But the real value to Rocketry is that you can get to learn how to use these kind of mathematical and scientific principles to build stuff that you can then use. And then with that, you have this experience you can take into like aerospace engineering and other classes. Right now I'm in the aerospace course. I get all this knowledge in Rocketry last year. Now I'm kind of know what I'm doing. It's great. And plus, I want to work at Boeing later on, so I have the experience now to know what, how to design like planes and design aircraft. Maybe not as much as the guys at Boeing, but I still have like the experience in, aer in aerospace engineering. So it's a really fun course. You get to learn math, you get to learn science, you get to build and launch rockets. And really, that's the best part right there. But again, you also get that experience in how to design, how to build something, and you get to take that in later life. Hi, I'm Hillel Coates, a third year member and the lead of software for FRC Team 1778 Chill Out. FRC, or First Robotics Competition, is a program in which high school students from around the world design, build, program, test, and compete with a 125 pound robot around the size of a person. By joining FRC, you have the opportunity to see the skills and knowledge you have acquired from school applied to a physical problem each and every year, competing in a healthy manner with other students around the world. Wherever your interest may be, there's a place for you in FRC. Graphic design, software development, fundraising, electronics, CAD and mechanical engineering, outreach, sports modeling, and so much more. In the past three years on Chill Out and the previous five years I've been a first student, I've gained so much applied knowledge. Been able to work alongside in industry professionals and made friendships and connections with other students from our school and others. In my senior year, I can confidently say that FIRST has prepared me for my future and I'll miss the competitions, long build season nights, and the opportunities to be with other like-minded students. If you have any interest in developing your skills, FRC is a great place for you. What up, Melly Terrace? My name is Kylie Prescott, and I'm here to talk to you about Iatrix. Are you a girl at Melly Terrace High School that's interested in learning about biological systems, healthcare, and being in healthcare professions? Then Iatrix might be the club for you. This is a platform for high school girls to talk about biomedical and medical topics, listen to speeches from healthcare professionals, and also just get excited about these vast medical fields. Members of IATRIX are interested in medicine, medical careers, and advances in medical research, and also just interested in having fun together. IATRIX meets every other week so that elected leaders have a week in between to plan interesting and interactive meetings and as well as plan for speakers. And if you're a boy that's interested in Iatrix, there are plenty of boys that come to Iatrix meetings to learn about women in science. And real talk, being in high school, especially online, can be really overwhelming. And maybe being in a club is the last thing on your mind. But for me, being in clubs this year have really helped me feel still a part of my community and friends and family in Mallee Terrace. So, if you're interested in Iatrix, give Miss LaFaver an email, and I hope to see you at the meetings. Bye, guys! Hello Future Hawks, my name is Alfredo Alumdar, I am president of the MTHS VEX Robotics, and I am here today to talk about the club. In VEX, the teams use the engineering design process to build robots to compete in competitions. Each team has to decide a team captain and split up some roles. The roles are driver, coder, and mechanic. Each year the game changes, here is a clip of a team last year testing out their robot. That game was called Tower Takeover, where the goal was for teams to pick up the most blocks and stack them into towers. I entered in as a freshman, and I really enjoyed it because it was the first time I felt like I was in a community. 
In the club, I learned how to use the design process, some basic coding, I even learned some leadership skills. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day. back to full screen. There we go. And I'm unmuted. Excellent. So guys, these are our results. So what you're looking at is data from our last three years of graduating seniors. And uh, the things I want you guys to pay attention to is our GPAs are high and our SAT scores are high. 100% of our students who apply to two and four-year colleges get into where they want to go. And every year we have a couple of students who not only get into University of Washington, but they get a direct admission into University of Washington. I get one thing set, there we go. Um, and that's a huge accomplishment. So yeah, and you'll hear a little bit more about that in a bit. So uh, we talk a lot about UW, of course, because it's the college down the street. Um, but we've also sent students to Cal Poly, Georgia Tech, uh, Embry-Riddle, U.S. Naval Academy, and more. And naturally, after our program, students predominantly major in a STEM field. So they're getting to that big blue box of possible jobs. Uh, all right, eighth graders, I want to talk to you guys again. Your freshman year, you're going to be in one of two sets of classes. So if you guys are in Math 8 now, which means you would be in Algebra 1 as a freshman, this is what you guys start out with. And it's awesome. So you take two classes, the first of which is a programming class. So you're going to be learning code and logic, uh, but you're actually going to be writing apps for your cell phone. And you're going to be using Python, which is an industry standard language. So it's not just an intro class. You're going to be doing stuff at an industry level. If you're not the type to sit in the chair all period, uh, you guys are also going to be taking robotics, which is a semester long course where you basically build a creature. So you're going to be learning structural engineering, you're going to be learning mechanics, all to make a body that does the thing that you need that robot to do. And then you go into the software development side of things and you develop the brain that's going to interact with those sensors and interact with those motors and servos and bring your machine to life. And uh, that's a screenshot of the kids. They're out of the seat the whole time. And uh, it's actually hard to walk through that classroom because you get attacked by robots. That's a problem we have in our department. It's a hard life. Uh, okay, if you have already taken algebra by the time you come to us, you're gonna start with me in Intro to Engineering Design. So this is a year long course where we take you from idea to prototype. You're gonna learn sketching, you're gonna learn computer design, you're gonna learn measurement and dimensioning. And then you're gonna learn how to use all kinds of different ways to develop your design. You're gonna learn woodworking, you're gonna learn 3D printing, you're gonna learn mill writing, you're gonna learn laser cutting. And the result is being able to create something that you think of. Uh, so in the middle here, you see this retro pie this was a couple students came to me at the end of the year and they said, hey, we want to build an arcade game. It's like, yeah, me too. Let's do it. We got them the hardware. Uh, some of the programming kids came in and they, they got all the hardware configured and they got the software set up. And then some of the more mechanical oriented kids designed this box and got it to hold all the equipment. And uh, well, let's just say I'm still beaten and unbeaten in Dr. Mario. Uh, kids play this thing three or four hours a day. It's great. Uh, we have a full bank of 3D printers, and I could go on about this class for hours. It's awesome. Here's the best part. If you took these classes your freshman year, you get to take this your sophomore year anyway. So you get to take this class no matter what. Um, okay, so we're going to get into the other engineering classes that we offer, but I do want to talk a little bit about our math and our science departments. So if you come to the STEM program, you're a Montlake Terrace High School student, which means you take the math and science for our school. Uh, our math department is something really special. Uh, right off the bat, you can see the second bullet point. Uh, we have the best SBA scores in the district. So what's that tell you? 
Uh, what's really cool though, is if you talk to our math teachers, they're not really focused on that test. What they're focused on is getting clear communication, clear collaborative skills, and the computational skills needed for that test. And the data shows that it works. What's really cool too, is because we have a high mass of STEM kids coming to Terrace High School, we can offer more sections of higher level classes. So it, it gets hard at the higher levels to offer classes like AP Statistics and the second year of AP Calculus. But because we have enough students who are seeking high level math courses, it becomes easier for us to offer those sections. So it's a huge advantage. Uh, science actually has a similar thing happening. It, it becomes easier for us to offer high-end courses like AP Chemistry, AP Physics, AP Astronomy. And um, that's a huge advantage to students. Our uh, science teachers all have a phenomenal amount of experience and background, and that shows up in our classes. There's a huge emphasis on um, teaching laboratory skills that are at industry level. We have phenomenal equipment. Um, all this stuff happens at the other side of the school, and I don't get to see it often. But a few years ago, um, one of Miss LeFevre's students, and you'll uh, hear from her more, actually came down and brought me over and showed me how gel electrophoresis worked. And uh, first of all, it was really cool for a junior to be showing me this stuff and just being way smarter than I am. Um, but it's some really, really phenomenal equipment as well. And of course, a big emphasis on a hands-on interaction with all of it. These kids know how to use the equipment when they leave these departments. All right, that's enough for me for a while. I'd like to introduce you guys back to uh, Brian Smelser, and he's going to tell you a little bit about the aerospace engineering pathway. All right. Next slide, please. All right, so our pathways are set up like this. Um, we typically have a math class, a science class, and then a STEM class for pretty much every year. Um, and so if you look in the colored sections here, uh, if you're doing going for a regular STEM diploma, you would take that CS Foundations your freshman year. Um, for the aerospace pathway, um, your next class, if you're doing uh, the regular STEM pathway would be the intro to engineering design that Mr. Wilson was talking about with the arcade game. And then typically um, for the aerospace pathway, your next couple classes are the principles of engineering class um, and then the intro to aerospace engineering. I think the kind of the best way to do this is to get these two out of the way, uh, both in your junior year, although some um, students wait until their senior year to take their aer aerospace and take their aerospace class and their um, English 12 STEM class. Uh, we'll talk more about the English 12 STEM class, but it's basically a research class. Uh, the students get English credit for it. Um, and they get to you know, design and uh, design projects to uh, big scale research projects that last the whole year. Um, so anyway, that's for the regular STEM diploma. If you're in the honor STEM diploma pathway, um, you're coming in a little bit higher math level. And so you're taking engineering, intro to engineering design um, your freshman year, and you can basically take one STEM class each year. Um, and you can see that, you know, the you basically, most of the students are taking principles of engineering their sophomore year, uh, intro to aerospace engineering their junior year, and then the English 12 STEM their senior year. All right, next slide. All right, so for the principles of engineering class, um, it's really kind of a, um, I'd like to think of it as like a survey class. Uh, it's got a little bit of everything in it. Um, and it's a lot of stuff that they, that students typically don't get in a normal science class. So they don't get a lot of the, um, you know, vectors and statics and um, hydraulics and pneumatics and stuff like that. A lot of that stuff just doesn't typically happen in a lot of those types of classes. So they're getting um, a, a different set of, of science. There is some stuff that overlaps, um, but there are definitely some things that are, you know, the only place they really happen in the building are in this class. And so those are the, the big picture topics that we do. Next slide. The main projects we have, um, there are five. Uh, we typically do a compound machine. Uh, so our, our first section that we do every year is a simple machines unit. Um, and then their culminating project for that is a compound machine. And the idea behind that is that they have to use the weight of a water bottle as their input. Um, and it can go from about 18 inches above a table down to the floor. Um, and their output is, um, they have to run through five different 
simple machines that are connected together and they're they have to operate a stapler and so it's um you know they get to go through the whole planning and design phase and sketching and um you know draw a cad model of it and everything else so it's pretty fun the las vegas marquee is basically a breadboarding activity it's you know pretty basic but it's uh but the students really like it because you get the bright lights and the um and the fun parts of that uh, then we do a projectile motion machine, which we usually use ping pong balls, and the students have to launch a ping pong ball um, over 15 feet, and it's for accuracy, not just for distance. And so they have to build a machine out of VEX materials that is consistent, which is the, a really tricky thing for students to do. Uh, then you can see here one of the truss bridges that we built. They're usually about six feet long, about 18 inches tall, and about 20 inches wide. Um, and then we stack a bunch of 45 pound plates from the gym in there. This one held, I believe, about 1,300 pounds in somewhere in that neighborhood. And it still didn't break, and it's still sitting in my room. So um, we're going to break that eventually when uh, we're able to do STEM Expo again. And then at the end of the year, we do an arcade machine. Uh, it originally was a marble sorter, is what the curriculum has. And then we, um, I've kind of expanded it to has some other options. Next slide. Uh, for the principal's engineering class, uh, students can get uh, some CAD credit through that class. The great thing about that CAD credit is, unlike a lot of the college credits the students can get in high school, um, this is actually one of those courses that can check off a box on their list of classes they need for their four-year degree. So if they're looking to go into you know, architecture or engineering or something of that nature that requires CAD, um, they can get that class out of the way while they're in high school. Right? That's one less thing they have to pay for when they're in college. And it's you know pennies on the on the dollar. I think it's like $200 or something like that. And if your student's on free and reduced lunch, um, usually the fee is free, okay? Um, we usually do this registration for that in the spring. Right, next slide. All right, the aerospace engineering class, uh, we cover a bunch of things. So we start with you know how basically airplanes fly. Uh, we get into navigation and, you know, VORs and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, GPS and so on and so forth. We talk about orbital mechanics. So we move from kind of this flight within our atmosphere into more of things that are happening in space. Um, and we also look at designing and analyzing structures uh, like frame analysis, that sort of thing using CAD. Um, and we do some programming and robotics. There's a, um, an activity where students basically build uh, three different things. They build a, um, a simulated sat satellite that goes over their floor. Uh, it's basically an ultrasonic sensor that rides along a rail and they map out um, some contours on the floor and they take all that data and dump it into Excel and they basically make a map of the terrain that's below, uh, which is pretty cool. So there's a bunch of other stuff that we do as well. We build some gliders, we build um, composite rockets and a bunch of other things as well, which is on the next slide. All right, and so we do some balsa gliders that basically are looking at um, um, control surfaces, not control surfaces. The gliders are looking at um, <laughs> basically balancing out the surface area and the uh, weight distribution of the planes, so center of gravity, so on and so forth. Um, we also do some airfoil design, uh, do some little bit of RC plane stuff. Um, we haven't done that for a while just because of COVID. Um, we do some airframe testing, so we build, um, like I said, uh, the airframe stuff in CAD and do some testing within the, um, the CAD systems. Uh, we, we basically build some composites and do some testing with our stress analyzer. Um, you know, start talking about stress strain curves, that sort of thing. Uh, we build composite rockets and, um, once again, the robotics satellite, like I've talked about. Next slide. All right, uh, we have an internship uh, possible and some more college credit through the Washington Aerospace Scholars. Um, so there is a program for um, sophomores and a program for juniors. The junior one starts in the fall and the um, sophomore one starts in the spring. Uh, and so the juniors can get the five uh, credits of natural science from UW. So for most engineering degrees, that's not necessarily gonna be a great, um, you know, check off a box kind of class for, you know, a mechanical engineering degree, but you could probably use it as an elective or something of that nature. Um, students can also get a summer residency at the Museum of Flight and they can get a summer internship going through that. And so there's uh, some pretty cool opportunities there to, you know, get some connections with Boeing. Um, some of those students that have gotten these internships in the past, um, Boeing said, hey, as soon as you graduate, come talk to us because we want to give you a job, right, right out of high school. So not necessarily as an engineer, but just as a 
you know, a floor worker or something like that at Boeing. All right, next slide. And that's all I have. And I'm gonna turn it over to Kim. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Hi. Um, next slide, please. Hi. Actually, we can skip this one. Uh, we all know that computer science is part of everything in our daily life. Um, so um, I put this slide, and there's a picture of um, Stephen um, who won um, first prize in a um, coding uh, competition in PSCSTA in April of 2019. But um, just want to talk about um, why computer science is very important in our daily life. So computer science prepare you for success, not only in a computer science major and career, but also in other fields. So for example, computer science skills can help you to create an app to track um, health data and provide real-time suggestion, suggestion for ways to live healthier your life. Or right now, even content tracing for COVID-19. Uh, you can um, design a built robot for use in the field like uh, manufacturing, surgery, research, and transportation, or as simple as to post something on social media or create a website to raise awareness for causes you care about. So everything is computer science. So usually when people think about computer science, they think about programming. So in other words, there are endless opportunities for students to pursue once they learn all the skills that they have taught in these classes, not just programming. So in our program, students will have opportunities to go on field trip, competition, like coding um, competition or TSA or VEX. Or we also have a visit from a guest speaker, just like James was talking about, um, industry um, guest speaker from industry like Amazon and Boeing. We can, they can also apply for the um, internship and scholarship. And most importantly, they will have um, hand-on experiences solving real life examples through um, the projects that they were doing in these classes. Next please. So in my computer science pathway, there are two um, core classes. So after they take um, intro to engineering design, doesn't matter if they're in a regular STEM diploma or uh, honors diploma, they have to take two um, AP classes, two computer science classes. Four of them are AP classes and consider introductory, introductory college level courses. And over 950 colleges and university offer college credit for qualifying score um, on the AP exam. Usually it's three or above. Next, please. Right. The first class in computer science pathway is AP Computer Science Principle. So this class will help students understand how computer and technology influence, influence the wall around them. And also they will create digital project like such as games or apps to address real world issue in the same way uh, writers or programmers or designer do. And they do not need to know anything about computer science or any programming languages. They're gonna learn everything in here. So students will learn how um, computer innovations and computer system work, uh, as well as internet, cyber security, and also explore the impacts and contribution to the culture and society. So this class, um, when they take the AP exam, the AP exam has two parts into it. There, there is, um, performing tests that they have to create, usually um, something that they're interested in, something about innovation and computing. And end of the course, um, multiple choice exam question, uh, exam um, in May. That is about 70% of the, um, the whole exam. So that the first 30% of the project, they can submit it ahead of time. They do it in their own time and they submit it um, through the digital portfolio. And then the test, they have to um, take it on paper and pencil um, if the school opens. Next one, please. So in this class, there are five main ideas that we cover. We cover creative development, data, algorithm and programming, um, computer system and network uh, impact of computing. 
And these are some of the um, faces that students create um, using text-based programming language that they have learned in the classroom. Next slide, please. This course doesn't have a des designated um, programming language. So they don't need to know any prior, prior computer science knowledge or programming language. We're gonna use Scratch for the block base and then Python for the text base for um, programming languages for this class. They're also gonna learn JavaScript to do some um, semester project. There are two semester project in this classroom. The first one is to create an app of their choice using JavaScript. And the second one is they're gonna build a website of their choice. Next one, please. So the second class that we have in computer science pathway is AP Computer Science A. In this class, um, they're gonna be doing um, coding using um, Java. So they're gonna learn object-oriented programming language. Um, and there are 10 units in this, um, this course that they're gonna learn um, Java programming language start from the beginning to the end. This is also a UW class. So next slide. The equivalent cost for the UDEV class is CSE 142. So they're gonna have an opportunity to enroll in um, UDEV in high school and earn four credit of UDEV, um, four, four UDEV credit. The price is usually about $65 per credit. And then there's like registration fees about $40 um, or $50, something like that. And um, totally, um, total, is about $305 and they will earn full credit of UDEP. So this class, not only um, they have an opportunity to take the AP test and then get the AP credit and also they can earn the UDEP credit too. Next, next please. So in addition to the two core classes for computer science pathway, I also teach two introductory classes that um, Jane was already talking about. So there are computer science foundations and robotic in robotic, we, we use VEX robotic right now. So we have a two to one ratios of robot. So if school is in section, um, we will be using uh, a robot for, for each pair of students. And for this semester, for the computer science foundation class, they are gonna be um, creating the F for the first um, project. And the second one, they're gonna create um, a ringtone F for the device. And next one, actually, that's it, hold on. <laughs> so I just wanna go ahead and talk about a little bit about robotic class. So in the robotic class, they're gonna um, build using VEX robotic, but they're only gonna um, do things in the classroom and then compete, uh, complete the various tests in class. So if you have, if they're interested more about doing the robotic competition, that they can join the um, VEX Robotic Club, uh, after school club that um, James was already talking about. And I'm also one of the advisor for the TSA and also the VEX Robotic. So um, if they want to compete in the regional or state or national, or hopefully we can go to the war in the future, they can join these club. And so now, now I'm gonna um, introduce you to our biotech teacher, Penny Lefebvre. Hello everyone. Uh, like, I, like Ken said, my name is Penny LeFaver and I'm the lead teacher in the biotechnology pathway. Uh, James, go ahead and advance the slide for me, please. Thank you. In our uh, pathway, you can see that the intro to engineering design is different. This is the STEM diploma and the honors diploma like you've seen before. The intro to engineering design here for the honors diploma is slightly ahead of the regular diploma. In our pathway, we have biotechnology as our first uh, pathway class. Again, one year in front for the honors diploma, then the regular STEM diploma, but they both get it. Uh, AP biology is our second pathway class. Again, one year ahead in the honors diploma than in the regular STEM diploma, but they both get an additional year of science. In the regular STEM diploma, they'll have physics or anatomy and physiology or another uh, science class that fits where they think they want to go. In honors STEM, they're gonna have either AP Chem or AP Physics or anatomy and physiology. Again, it depends on where they think they wanna go with their STEM degree. Um, then, or the STEM diploma. Uh, again, here they're taking 
their CS foundations and robotics in a regular STEM diploma in their freshman year if they're coming in at Algebra 1. Uh, next slide, please. So a little bit about me, uh, and I'm going to leave this up there. I'm not going to talk about all of it. I just want you to know that um, I'm coming to you with lots of experience from the field to work with your students in biotech. Um, I have worked in the field. I've worked uh, in the lab. Uh, I've write curriculum now with Fred Hutch and with uh, ISB downtown and with SCCA. Uh, I have published field work. Um, and so I am in the labs right now, which is really fun. And um, so I see what we do in the in the lab, and then I come to school and work with the students and get them the skills that they need to be successful as they go into that career. Let's go ahead and advance the slide, please. So in the biotechnology course, that first course that they'll take in this pathway, here are some of the things that are highlights for them. Uh, in that top picture, you'll see that students are working with pipettes. And the first thing that we'll teach them to do is we'll teach them to do some DNA extraction uh, with fruit. Actually, the students just did this at home, which was really unique and exciting for them this year. They got to take their pipettes home for the first time, and then they'll analyze the DNA a little bit and figure out what it can tell them and what it can't tell them. And they figure out really quickly that what they see on TV isn't quite right. Um, then we'll do some gel electrophoresis and learn some more about how they don't do it right on TV. And they'll learn about paternity tests and they'll learn about some other things that um, gel electrophoresis can tell us. Um, they'll do a PCR, which is where we take DNA and we, we ramp it up and can make many, many copies of it very fast. Um, we use some chromatography where we take and divide cells quickly and divide things into its uh, component parts. Uh, we have a really interesting project that they'll do in biotech where they actually work with a scientist from the University of Washington and we take elephant uh, ivory the trunk DNA, uh, and we'll take the ivory, we'll get the DNA out of it, and then they'll actually use uh, some DNA analysis to identify what herd uh, the DNA came from in Africa based on dung samples that have been collected from each herd, and um, then tell the uh, case manager whether the ivory is uh, legal or illegal and whether the confiscated ivory should be kept or given back to the person who it was confiscated from. So it's a really uh, unique actual uh, and that, um, application for them that they get to use their skills on. Uh, the bottom picture there is bacterial transformation. We take E. coli, safe E. coli, and they uh, actually transform it to be antibiotic resistant. And in the meantime, we also add a gene that causes it to glow, which is very exciting. Um, and then we teach them how to destroy it. And we talk about antibiotic resistance and what it does to our society. Um, we talk about the CDC, the Center, of, Center for Disease Control, and we talk about ethics. And this year, that's been a hot topic. But I tell you, every year, the students love it when we talk about these things, because I tell you, they like to argue. Um, what's nice about the biotechnology classroom is that it's all hands-on application. So we learn about something, and then we apply it. And the students really love having hands-on activities. They love having hands-on labs. They love knowing that they're purposeful and that people are doing these things each and every day as part of their jobs and their careers. And that they see some of these things on TV and that then they understand what it is that they're really doing. Um, in this class, we also have an opportunity to take and do some projects and take them out to what's called a Bio Expo Fair. And our students usually do very well at the Bio Expo Fair, but this is an opportunity for them to pursue something that they're interested in uh, in biotechnology, and uh, it may not be something that we directly study, but it always has connections to what we're doing in class. Next slide, please. Thank you. So in biotechnology, the students get their first opportunity to job shadow. This is either as sophomores or juniors, and many of them as sophomores. And this is either during school or in the summertime, they have internship opportunities, but their job shadow is during the school year, we either excuse them from class or they go after school or they go on a day off and they actually shadow around someone is, who's in a biotechnology career that they're interested in. So they go out and get some hands-on first, first person experience. Another opportunity that the students have uh, once they've gone through chemistry is that they can uh, participate uh, and apply in what's called the biopath at AGC. AGC is a company in uh, Canyon Park, so very close to us. And they actually hire paid interns uh, from our program. And uh, it's wonderful. 
Uh, we'll talk about the AGC biologics in a little bit, but what's really great is that our students can earn credit for high school and get paid at the same time and earn valuable experience. Uh, in STEM 12, the students do a year long research project with a mentor in their field as well. So in this pathway, there are ample opportunities for job shadows and internships. Next slide, please. So the AGC Biopath, I'm gonna leave this here. This link right here is a link that will open up a video that we're not gonna watch now, but these numbers on the bottom are the numbers of students who have participated since we started this Biopath program. And we're the only group in the state right now that has a paid high school level program for students to get internships where they're paid to work during school. They don't miss school hours, but they are high school students and they're getting a paid internship. So the first year they had six, then they get 17 the next year of students working at AGC. Uh, this year, they would have had 40 except for COVID. So they had 40 student slots. So I'm sure as soon as we get opened up again, they'll hire 40 again, but they were ready to hire 40 students this year um, until we got shut down with COVID. But the video talks a little bit about what students do and um, how students interact. And you'll hear a student voice there, which I think is really great. Next slide, please. So the other curriculum class that we have is AP Biology, and this is a class that is governed by the College Board. And the students take the class and then they take the same um, uh, college test that is a worldwide exam. And it's all given on the same day worldwide. So they um, have a, a class that is coordinated throughout the world for all of the teachers who teach this. So we all go to the same training and learn about the class and we teach it in a particular way. So we have uh, the curriculum highlights here. These are the science practices. What I want you to see here is that the bold words are about doing science. They're not about memorizing science. And what we do in this class is we do science. So the students have a great deal of information that they learn, but they also have to do science in this class. So as you can see, as you can read through these things, they are engaged, they are planning, they are performing, they are explaining. This is not just memorizing. Next slide, please. The other thing that I wanted you to know about AP Bio is that everything that we do in that class fits under four general topics, evolution, cell processes, genetics and information, and interactions. So everything that they're doing fits in these four general themes. Next slide, please. So as we're moving into this slide about biotechnology pathway and why students choose it, in AP Bio, the students get their first opportunity to really look at a, an, a, um, an experiment and actually decide what they want to do. Uh, before then, they usually have in a general science class what we call a cookie cutter lab. They'll get a lab and it tells them what to do and what if they're gonna expect to have happen. In AP Biology, they're given basic uh, instruction, and then they're told, okay, now figure out this question. And then they design their own lab. So every lab group is usually doing something a little bit different. And they're answering their own question and then sharing results, much like you would out in the real world in a real lab, where every little lab group is doing something and the general uh, investigator or the principal and the PI the, then meets them as a group together and says, okay, so what is, what's happening in your experiment? And what's happening in your experiment? And we'll share what's going on in your experiment. And then they talk to each other and give each other some feedback. And it's very much what happens in real labs. So students tend to choose this pathway because they like to be hands-on. They like what's going on in real life and like being able to do that. They like learning about pipettes and gels and PCR, and they really, uh, like the curriculum that they're being taught because they know that it is current, that it really helps prepare them for the future. They are leaps and bounds ahead of their peers when it comes to job shadow and internship experience, which really helps them at interviews and for colleges and for scholarships. And the fact that they get to go places on field trips and do things and be out into uh, career fields makes a big difference for these students. Next slide, please. So we've talked a little bit about the fact that they have internships that are paid and unpaid, both available to them. They have college credit available to them. We have industry and college campus tours that we take. Uh, we even this year are doing uh, classroom visits. We're having people zoom into our classrooms and uh, we're practicing uh, or we're having Zoom sessions with practicing professionals. And we are still having uh, summer camps for our students 
and opportunities for them over the summer. Uh, we actually just this week had a um, a tour at Fred Hutch of one of the of the Keem Lab just this week on Tuesday. Next, please. So just like the other pathways, there are college credits available in each pathway. Uh, in biotech, these are all transferable credits as well. Biotech, they can earn a high school credit for science and CTE and college credits on top of that. And these college credits are not expensive compared to what we would normally pay at this university. Uh, anatomy and physiology also has the same option. Uh, for AP classes, AP bio, AP chem, AP physics, they earn their college credit by taking the test. So they would pay for their college uh, test in the fall, they would take their college test in May and then earn that uh, test credit that way or college credit that way. And then of course, students who are hired by AGC, a lot of them are offered jobs as soon as their internship is over. And one great thing about working at AGC is that they have college tuition reimbursement and they actually pay your tuition for you, which is great. And uh, they are all about sending students to uh, further their education. Next slide, please. Uh, I wanna talk just briefly about STEM English 12. This is our capstone class. And English 12 is an honors level class. Go ahead and next slide, please. It's an honors level class that focuses on writing, reading, speaking, and listening. It is a true English class, but it is a technical writing class. It focuses on, can you research at the college level? Can you look up a patent? Can you research in a database to find out what else is out there on the idea that you have? Um, this is a research class because students are looking at their own uh, research question. What is it that they want to work on? What is it that problem that they want to solve? Whether it be with computer science or engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, uh, biotech engineering, what is it that they want to solve? And what is it that they wanna work on for a year long project? Uh, then they get connected with an outside mentor that works in the field of choice that, that they think will be most helpful to them and will support them in the area where they feel they need the most help. Um, they design the project. Uh, they get it approved by an outside safety and review committee who looks at ethics and safety. Once they get an approval, they're off and running. In the meantime, we're helping them uh, work on their English skills in the classroom, and we support them in their research all year long. In the spring, they take their project and it goes to competitions with them, at least three different competitions where they are judged uh, by professionals in the fields in which they are competing. So if they do a CS project, if they do a computer science project, they are judged uh, by a CS professional. So it's really great. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the capstone projects, the students tend to do very, very well. And they really are, um, they do a lot of learning and growing during this 12th grade year. Um, mostly because they haven't had a technical writing class before, first of all, and they've never had total freedom before to do a project, a year long project of their own. And they get frustrated sometimes, but they really learn by uh, overcoming those hurdles that they run into, those walls they run into sometimes. And uh, above all else, this is what students talk about year after year when they come back. Next slide, please. They get really nervous when they go to competitions, but they do very, very well at competitions. So WSSEF, the WSSEF, they go to the, the regional science and engineering fair, and then we take them to the state science and engineering fair. Most of them uh, get there too. Uh, we have been the top school at the Washington Science and Engineering Fair for 2018, 19, and 20. The, on the left there, you'll see the award there for excellence uh, in science and engineering achievement. Um, this is because we have uh, the school with the winningest record, that is the correct verbiage, for the winningest record for those three years running. And we hope to pull it off again this year in the virtual fair again. This is against schools who are uh, much more, much better positioned to win this award, but our students really um, come, come up and uh, show us proud at, at this competition. We cannot speak enough, highly enough about their achievements uh, throughout the year and how well they do at competitions like this. Next slide, please. At this point, I'll pass it back to James. Thank you all. Who will unmute himself. Um, thank you, Penny, and thank you to all the Pathway teachers. Um, I wanna say it now and I'm gonna say it at the end, this whole presentation is being recorded and transcripted. So in a couple of days, we're gonna have uh, all of this available on the website because 
this has been a tremendous amount of information in a short period of time. Um, just a couple other things uh, to let you guys know about. We just got this STEM recognition off the ground a couple of years ago. And what it means is um, certain collections of our classes, and I believe, yeah, all of our students will achieve this recognition by the time they graduate. Um, if they get a STEM diploma, they get this recognition and it's recognized by um, universities all over the nation. So even though we've created this STEM program as a grassroots organization in the Edmond School District, it is endorsed by the college board through this recognition and universities all over the nation will see this and they know what this means. So it's a good thing. Uh, a quick recap, we have seven AP courses available throughout our program. Uh, this is accelerated placement through the college board. Uh, we have college and the high school course options. This is college credit that is transcripted directly from either University of Washington or local community colleges. And uh, any of these courses mirror the college curriculum. Uh, teachers who offer these courses are actually endorsed by the universities to offer these uh, credits. All right, one more opportunity to hear a little bit from students and then we will let you guys, um, I was gonna say go home, you're already home. Uh, so what you're gonna hear from students from these three pathways talking about their experiences in the pathways. Hi everyone, my name is Brianna Hopkins and I'm a senior at Mount Lake Terrace High School. From what I understand, a lot of you guys are part of the Highly Capable Program at Briar Terrace Middle School. Well, I was too, about four years ago, so I know exactly what this time is like. I'm here to talk to you about the STEM program here at Mount Lake Terrace High School, specifically the Biotechnology Program. I'm currently in my senior year of the Biotechnology Program, and I've loved every minute of it. This pathway is a biology-based program where you are surrounded by peers with the same passion as your own. Each course is filled with labs, projects, and units, all focused on broadening your understanding in a fun and immersive way. I have built the tools, tools for my future here as a pediatric nurse practitioner, and I know you can do the same, especially if you're interested in a STEM career. Whether you choose computer science, aerospace, or biotechnology, you're sure to get a fascinating and immersive educational experience. The love for STEM here at Malik Terrace High School creates a strong community for dedicated individuals such as yourself. I hope you choose to join us. Bye. My name is Lynn. My name is Xander. My name is Cohen, and we are all juniors of the Computer Science Pathway. In our first year of Computer Science, we learned how to make our own website using HTML and CSS coding. We also learned the basics of the programming language, Java. We also studied about data and how it can affect our lives. The reason why I took the computer science pathway was because I enjoyed coding. It was kind of like a puzzle for me to solve. So my th favorite thing about the class is probably um, learning JavaScript and how widely accepted JavaScript is. Instead of learning, you know, something really small like Scratch, very limited in what you can do. JavaScript is used in most jobs and can be used pretty much anywhere or everywhere. Thank you for listening to us talk about our computer science class. Have a good day. I probably wouldn't be who I am today without the aerospace pathway. You see, I started off my freshman year a bit lost. I wasn't really sure what I was going to be when I grew up. So I ended up joining the aerospace pathway to kind of help me figure out what I wanted to do. The pathway was more, um, I heard the pathway was more of hands-on learning and full of hands-on activities. So I felt like overall this pathway would be fun. And I was right. <laughs> we had a lot of engineering projects that really required me to be creative and use the knowledge I learned in class to make a really successful product. I think that's the best part of this pathway. Unlike my other classes, the stuff I was learning could really be applied to real world situations like building a bridge. And these projects kind of made me realize that I have what it takes to be an engineer, and it wouldn't take long before I fell in love with aerospace engineering.
All right. Um, I'm going to get through the last couple of bits fairly quick to respect your guys' time. Um, I talked a little bit about our STEM community. I just want you guys to know it's a big deal. Um, I'll let you guys know I graduated actually from Edmonds Woodway High School in 2001, and uh, I am totally a STEM kid. And uh, at the time, Edmonds Woodway didn't really have much of a STEM offering. And um, one of the main reasons that I became a teacher is to create that space and create that opportunity for STEM kids uh, to feel like they have a home. And uh, I feel like we do that really well. In the past, we've had movie nights. I told you a little bit about the Nintendo competitions that we do about three, four times a year. And uh, we're always looking for different ways uh, to build that. We're actually using uh, Among Us in some of our classes now to build community uh, during our Zoom meetings. Um, and kids enjoy to be here. It, kids enjoy being in our program. Uh, it was very easy to get students to come forward in these videos. Uh, they enjoy what they do. They're proud of what they do. And they enjoy supporting this community. And I think that's a huge accomplishment of ours. Uh, all right, nuts and bolts time. So um, you guys are, uh, you have till January 31st to apply to the STEM program. And you will find out by February 10th if you get in. Yes, we accept late um, applications. And um, let's see what else here. So if you are an in-area student, which means you're already going to Briar Terrace Middle School, Montlake Terrace is your normal uh, feeder school. All you have to do is um, mark that you're gonna be in the STEM program and the counselors uh, have special forms for you. You sign up for my course, Intro to Engineering Design, and uh, you're in, it's easy. If you are out of the uh, um, feeder area for Mount Lake Terrace High School, and this includes, we have a question about somebody who's off in the Seattle School District, it's pretty easy. There's one or two other forms that you guys have to fill out. Um, I'll show you where those are on the website and um, you'll get brought into the Edmond School District. Uh, same thing with any kid who's at a private school right now. There just might be one or two uh, pieces of paperwork to get you guys into the program. It's surprisingly convenient. All right, the application is open now. Uh, so you guys can use this tiny URL. And um, there's also a way to get to it on the website, which I'll show. Uh, let me see if there's anything I need to talk about live. Oh, yes. All right, guys, listen up. One of the biggest pieces of feedback that we get from this presentation is a concern that students have to choose a pathway right away. And that is not the case. Uh, if a student comes in to um, either WOMS programming and robotics classes or my IED class when they start, we're going to work with those students for a year or two um, to help them get to know the program, help them meet their peers, help them get to know who they are in the STEM world. And uh, all of us, Penny, Brian, Wone, and I, we serve uh, the role of counselors and mentors to help these students make that decision. Uh, we also help students change their mind. On occasion, uh, we have students who start in a pathway and they decide, hey, now that I really understand aerospace, I don't like it. We consider that a success. Remember, we're helping kids um, become inspired. So then we will um, help them create a custom pathway where they'll go into biotech or computer science and uh, it works out really well. So I know this sounds like a college major and I know this sounds like a high stress decision, but we take pretty good care of our students and we make good relationships with them. So we help them make that decision and um, tends to work out pretty well. If uh, you guys wanna use the website, it's pretty easy. Go to Mount Lake Terrace High School, find STEM, go to registration. You'll find the forms there. You'll also, I believe, find addendum paperwork if you're coming in from uh, outside the district. I believe those are there in the registration uh, page. And uh, folks, I believe we have successfully completed the presentation. 
We will stick around for another couple of minutes if there's any other questions that uh, you guys want to put in the Q&A. We'll cover those. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much for attending. Um, and uh, don't hesitate to go to the website. There's an email there. You guys can ask additional questions. Um, yeah, feel free to use the Q&A if you guys need anything more from me. Otherwise, have a good evening. I see a question, question from Christy that I'd like to answer aloud. Christy's asking, Christy's asking how many students are admitted to the STEM program? Christy, we admit students until we're full. And then uh, at that point would be the point that we would turn students away. So there's not a magic number. It just depends on how much space we have uh, from year to year based on how many students are in the upper grades. So I can't give you a specific question. Or I'm, I'm transcripting what you said as a typed answer for that. Perfect. And uh, if students isn't granted admission as a freshman, yes, there is, of course, a chance to reapply as an upperclassman. Yes, as a, as a sophomore, junior, or senior, we do have students who have joined the program after. We just would ask a student who uh, is a freshman uh, just to maintain uh, that they are uh, staying on track for graduation. And uh, our classes are open to other students as well. So uh, they can sometimes take it even if they're not in the program. So yes, of course. And then I have a question from an anonymous person. Uh, oh, that one is done, good. Thank you, Christy, no problem. Have a great day. I see a question from Grace uh, asking about coming in from the Home Education Exchange, yes, and have been taking Algebra One this year. Oh, fabulous. Uh, as long as uh, they've passed Algebra 1, they won't be testing into geometry. If they've passed Algebra 1, they should be able to start geometry as long as they're comfortable there, Grace. Any more questions? If you have a question, please feel free to put it in the question and answer box for us. We're happy to take some more questions. We have a little bit more time to do so. Oh, great, Lisa, I'm so happy.
All right. If there are no more questions, then I think we're going to go ahead and call this to a close. It is 7.45, and that is the time that we said we really needed to uh, be off before the webinar uh, rudely ends for us. So at this time, we'll bid you all adieu and say hope that we see you very soon at Terrace as a Hawk. And we wish you all a good night. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone, for attending. Thank you, guys.